Hey guys, this is Nick and I love Linux and I couldn't see myself using anything else. Now imagine an alternate timeline. Hey guys, this is Nick and welcome to my Windows experiment. And today we're going to discuss why Windows is so far ahead of the other operating systems you could use on any of your PC. <sighs> oh, the worst timeline. Mm. So I love Linux, but there are a few areas in which it still fails. Not fails as in it's super bad, it's terrible and no one should use it, but fails as in the alternatives do it better than us. These will probably be pretty personal, so I'm expecting a lot of disagreements in the comments. Don't hesitate to leave them there, I'm happy to discuss. Just remember, if your comment disappears, it's probably the YouTube algorithm. I only remove super offensive stuff like people telling me that they eat cheese without bread. The savages. Just like today's sponsor will make you savagely in charge of your internet connection. This video is sponsored by Safing, and you might already have heard me talk about their port master tool on the channel. It lets you monitor and control any detail of your internet connection with a simple graphical user interface through the use of block lists, profiles depending on your current connection, and per app setting. It's also completely free of charge and open source, but Safing is also developing the SPN, the Saving Privacy Network. It's a powerful VPN alternative which spreads your connections across the globe instead of rerouting all your connections to only one server. With the SPN, you can be everywhere at once. If that's something you'd like to try or if you want to help support Safing's open source work, you can try the SPN right now and subscribe to it and you'll get to use it for free in January. So just head over to the link in the description below and download either the Portmaster or subscribe to the SPN. Okay, so the first area where Linux fails is niche applications. So niche is a French word, hooray, and it means literally doghouse, as in it's a small place compared to other things. So basically niche applications are apps that fill a purpose for a small group of individuals or a not so small group depending on who you ask. So let's get this out of the way. Windows and macOS have superior app support than our Linux desktops have. We do have plenty of great software, alternatives to most, if not all, the biggest proprietary utilities that people use. Photoshop, InDesign, Illustrator, AutoCAD, Microsoft Office, Audition, all of these have alternatives on Linux that can do 90 plus percent of what their proprietary equivalent does. And that's where Linux still fails, that missing 10%. Professionals that rely on these niche applications need the missing 10% in most cases. And even if they could do without these 10%, there's still the matter of compatibility with your existing projects, files, basically everything you did before, and the training required to learn something that allows you to work, but not in the same way. Basically, these alternatives are good enough for regular people, like for example someone who dabbles in Photoshop for creating the odd meme or, or retouching a few photos. But for professionals who built their careers on a specific tool, they don't do the trick. Even though it's kind of these professionals' fault for putting their careers in the hands of a proprietary software company. Linux still fails at these apps. Even though we could still say that these app developers fail at bringing their apps to Linux, but the fact remains, these apps aren't on Linux, and so the pros that depend on them aren't on Linux either. So sure, you can make the transition with enough effort and motivation. I do video editing on Linux using professional tools like DaVinci Resolve. People can do it as well. The thing is, you're gonna spend a lot of time getting to the point where you already were before making the transition. So there's no real net gain here in terms of pure productivity. Second area where Linux fails is gaming. And oh boy, am I going to get some hate for this, but it's true. Look, I'm not saying you can't game on Linux. You can, and I do. Most of my gaming is on Linux, but gaming on Windows is still much, much better, much easier, and a no brainer for most people. We've come a long way with Proton, Steam Play, the Heroic Games Launcher, Lutris, and plenty of other awesome utilities. Gaming on Linux is a reality for single player titles. If you love your day one multiplayer session for AAA games, Linux is not going to work for you. Anti-cheat is coming, maybe, if the developers decide to update their games at some point in time, in the future, maybe, who knows. In the meantime, 50% of the top 10 most played games on Steam don't run on Linux for multiplayer or at all. And that number grows if you start looking at games that aren't on Steam. You've probably all seen the LTT video series. While I don't agree with everything they said there, or did, 
or with their conclusions. I do agree that Linux gaming is not ready for the general public. Now, for enthusiasts like me, or like plenty of you, Linux gaming works like a dream. The small hiccups, the small tweaks that we have to do, the small delays, they don't matter at all to us. But for the average Call of Duty Joe that just wants to pawn some noobs on day one, Linux doesn't fit the bill. Windows is better. We have to admit it. Things might pick up in the future. Maybe the Steam Deck will make developers implement anti-cheat. Or maybe even support Linux officially. Who knows? It's too early to tell. But for now, Linux fails at gaming when compared to Windows. Now, when compared to macOS, it just destroys it and will continue to do so as long as Apple decides to not support anything other than metal. No one uses that Apple, no one. Now, the third area where Linux fails is hardware. And I know Linux has nothing to do with hardware. Linux is a kernel. And actually, a kernel has a lot to do with hardware. Yeah. First thing is, Linux distros don't ship pre-installed on most hardware. We have tons of hardware manufacturers and resellers, and even bigger ones like Dell and Lenovo start shipping devices with Ubuntu or Fedora. We have Tuxedo and Slimbox, Star Labs and System76, Entroware, Purism, Juno Computers, The Pine64, and probably a lot more that I'm forgetting. And they make great stuff, sometimes even designing their own devices like Purism, Star Labs, Pine64 or System76. And every time I review one of these devices, I generally find them pretty cool to use. I use some myself as my daily drivers, but none of these devices are making their way into Walmart, Target, Carrefour, Fnac, whatever your local retail store is at your favorite place of residence. No one can go into these stores and play with a computer that has Linux pre-installed on it. And some will wonder, what distro should they ship? Which version? Which DE? It would be too complicated. People would still buy the thing they know. And my answer to that is none of it matters. Pick any distro, any desktop, GNOME, KDE, Fedora, Ubuntu, Dell could have PCs with Ubuntu, Lenovo could have PCs with Fedora. Who cares? It doesn't matter. The goal is to make sure that people see that these options exist. They probably won't buy them outright. But after your second computer renewal, maybe you decide to go for the one that's slightly cheaper with that interesting looking OS. And even if you don't, maybe you just start researching that new OS. Maybe you stumble upon this channel and subscribe to it. Maybe I become a billionaire. Everybody wins. Or, you know, at least manufacturers make sure that they have drivers, good drivers for all these laptops and PCs. So basically, Linux fails at making itself available on more hardware ready to buy from a general store. And that's probably the biggest issue we have to solve. But the final area where Linux fails is the choice. Oh, not because we lack choice or because we have too much choice. Just because we suck as a community, myself included, at presenting those choices in a legible and understandable manner. DistroWatch is not a good resource for picking a distro. Its ranking system makes no sense for newcomers and the website looks straight out of the 90s. No way anyone wants to browse that to find which distro they should use. Distro Chooser is way more user-friendly, but after you completed the questionnaire, you're presented with something like 40 options, which doesn't narrow it down at all. It's almost even worse because it makes it look like the community doesn't even know what to recommend to newcomers, which is true, we, we don't know. What would you recommend? Write in the comments, and I'm pretty sure I'll have as many comments as I have viewers. And the thing is, all these answers are valid. Well, not all. Some distros should really never get recommended, like, Arch like Hannah Montana Linux. Almost all these answers are valid. It all depends on what the user wants, likes, is used to, is looking for, their hardware, their ethical preference. It's virtually impossible to answer this kind of question. Hey man, I want to switch to Linux. What's the best distro for gaming? Small hint, there is no best distro for gaming or for video production or whatever else. The differences can all be replicated on every distro and the maximum difference you're gonna get is 2 FPS anyways. It doesn't matter. What we as a community need to realize is that we should have one distro per desktop environment to recommend for beginners. Not saying that we should have only one distro per desktop environment available. But as things that we recommend, there should be one per DE. There should be Neon, some kind of Gnome OS, maybe Fedora, XFC OS, Mate OS, Linux Mint, and Pop OS once they have their own DE. That's it. That's what we should have as recommendations. Because what matters for newcomers is the DE and default apps. The base is largely irrelevant for a newcomer. 
And I said for a newcomer, don't get all angry. Yes, distro bases are important in the future. But what a newcomer needs to do is get familiar with how the Linux file system is laid out, how they store their files, the various apps, the desktop environment they chose. That's what they should focus on, not the base, the packaging system. This doesn't matter. Newcomers will have plenty of time in the future to just try other distros, try other bases and understand these differences. That choice complexity needs to be reduced if we want people to be able to understand Linux and at least start using it before they decide it's too complex. Someone that sees all our choices and just turns tail and runs isn't helping anyone. We need to get them to use at least one distro and stop trying to peddle the ones we personally favor. Sorry if I got carried away here. What I'm trying to say is that Linux fails at choice. Not because we have too few, not because we have too many. That's unimportant and will never be fixed. Just because we as a community, and I'm including myself in there, suck at presenting four or five small choices depending on the desktop environment. The distro base doesn't matter for a newcomer at all. So to recap, Linux still fails at these four major points, niche or professional applications, choice, gaming, and being available on more hardware. Now, of course, it doesn't mean that Linux is bad. It's still, in my opinion, the best choice for me and for millions of other people. And these issues aren't unfixable. I'll try to outline some solutions that we can try to implement for each of these problems in future videos, so definitely subscribe if you want to see that. And if you want to see a fantastic gaming laptop at crazy low prices, stick around for this offer made by Slimbug, which also made this video possible. They're giving you a 300 euros discount on the Slimbook Titan, which has the latest Ryzen CPUs and RTX graphics. I reviewed it and found it beastly and amazing with a wonderful keyboard full of that tacky RGB people seem to love and a pretty slim and light body. Now you can use this offer code at checkout to get you 300 euros discount when buying the Slimbook Titan, but do hurry because these will last only for as long as there's some available. So if people have snagged them all, you're not getting one. So thank you guys for watching the video. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, don't hesitate to like, subscribe, turn on notifications. And if you didn't like the video, you can dislike and tell me why in the comments. If you want to help me keep doing these kind of videos, you can also join my Patreon subscribers and my YouTube members. You'll get access to a weekly Patreon cast and the right to vote on the next topics I'll cover. So thank you guys for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.